Hello everyone, this is Xiao Wei from Singer Foundation Research Team. I'm going to give an introduction of these two phase one. Uh, phase one is uh, the middle phase between phase zero and phase two. It's an important middle link to allow us to separate the data layer and the state extrusion layer. So this kind of abstractions allows the different research topic to be perceived in parallel. Phase one will also pave a way that we can merge each one into each two world uh, before phase two be done. Phase one provides several features to make the shutters work and secure. Today, I'd focus on the shutter and cross-linking and the cost again a bit more than the other topics. This is the data structure of the uh, side shot block. It's much simpler than the East one block or the beacon block. We have the pointers that point to the shot parent root and the beacon parent root. And the most data overhead is the black body. The body consists of the binary data and it doesn't have any in protocol transaction logic. So that's why it is called the shot data uh, data layer. And we expect that the layer two row ops applications will be benefits from it, uh, even if there's no transaction format, because the, the gas price in shot is much lower than is one. So about the gas price, we plan to introduce EIP 1559 style approach for the fee market. The gas price uh, adjustment formula is similar to uh, the EIP. If the shot block size is larger, then the gas price will be increased more and vice versa. There are two parts of the total transaction fee. The first part is the best fee that will be burned on chain. And the second part is the tip. Uh, it's the ether's amount that goes to the uh, shot block proposers. So in phase one, we expect that the user will pay the free uh, through maybe through layer two uh, solutions or via the is two contract. And in uh, phase two, the Transaction free could be paid directly through the uh, East 2 execution environment. Uh, so, this EIP could fix some important issues of the current free market economics. It makes most transactions are at the same uh, fee rate. And so, in the normal case, for the users, uh, they only need to uh, decide if they want to pay or not. It can help mitigate the situation that miner might uh, manipulate the free to extract more fees from the users. It's also a more efficient gas estimation than the current uh, face uh, the current. Uh, first price auctions in East one. I mentioned that the shot block has pointers to point to the shot parent block and the beacon parent block routes. So it's easy for the shot chain to reference to the beacon chain state. And to finalize the shot chain, we need the beacon chains to reference to the shard chain as well. So um, in the phase one beacon chain state, there's a field that 
uh, point to the latest sharp block route. So this field uh, will only be updated when there are more than two thirds of validators of a shard chain committee uh, of a shard committee that attested the head uh, shard block is valid. So with majority support, we can update the beacon chain state. And this process is called uh, cross linking. So if a, shot, a beacon block is finalized, then the shot block that the beacon state referenced is also be finalized. So, and if the shot block is invalid and the beacon chain somehow included it, then the beacon chain is also considered as invalid. It's possible that the community doesn't form a crosslink successfully at the slot. In this figure, the beacon block 101 doesn't crosslink the shot block 100 successfully. So this is the orange line um, is the failed crosslink. So in this case, the shot state reference uh, in the beacon state will remain the same in, after uh, proceed block, beacon block 101. And when beacon block 102 forms a successful crosslink, it will include both the state transitions uh, information of the shot block 100 and 101. So it can uh, cross-link both of them together in uh, one slot. Um, notice that we almost cross-link uh, every, at every slot. This kind of per slot cross-link means that we have a frequent on-chain communication period. It's good for having shot block get finalized earlier uh, because if the beacon block is finalized, the shot block that it included is also gets finalized. Um, so it's also good for providing better user experience of cross charge transactions because uh, if we want to um, send transaction from shot one to shot two, uh, there's no direct tuner between these shots. So we have to send transaction to, I mean, we will have to uh, send the meta to the beacon block and let beacon block to uh, help you to pass the Meta to the another shot chain. The custard again is for fixing the case that if uh, the validators are honest, but uh, since they might trust each other too much, so they don't fully download. Uh, store and verify the shot blocks uh, entirely. A challenger can send a challenge on chain to testify if the validator has a piece of the shot block data. So because we can set each uh, piece of the shot block data as a chunk and use the binary Merkle tree to store the data. So in this figure, each leaf is a chunk uh, of the shot block body. So in this way, we can Merkleize the shot block body to a Merkle root. The validator who gets challenged will have to respond 
uh, with the Merkle proof uh, to the data chunk that the challenge is assigned to. So if this proof is valid, then okay, everything is fine. But if the response failed to respond in time correctly, then the validator data will get slashed. So no understand more about the custody gain. This is the custody gain spake. This is a simplified abstract sequence diagram that uh, show you the basic message floor. So both the challenge and the response are uh, the beacon chain operations on chain. To make it work, the sharp block proposer has to generate an ephemeral custody gain key such that the Legender bit, uh, bit result is exactly zero. The proposer has to reveal uh, their key before the deadline, but also it can't be too early. So after the proposer revealed their key during this certain period, if other validator uses the uh, list key to recompute the Legender bit result, and if it's not zero, uh, it's one, then they can be the whistleblower to report that the block proposer has made a uh, invalid block and the block proposer will get stashed and the whistleblower will get a reward. In phase zero, the beacon committee members have to attest and propose the beacon block. And in phase one, there's a new responsibility for the big uh, validators is to help the light clients to verify the block properly. So besides the beacon committee, we will have another type of committees called the light client committee. They are responsible for sending the aggregatable like client votes to the subnets. And they will have a longer turn uh, than the beacon community. So they can be a, a more stable source in the P2P network. As for the short networking, the main challenge is how to deal with the a new shard data transfer overhead in the phase zero current uh, gossip subnet. Uh, we expect to do more prototyping with client teams of the phase one networking. In phase one, uh, at least we can expect to get quadratic uh, computation improvements. Um, plus, with some layer two roll up solutions, we can get a multiplied results. Here are some um, helpful reference documents that can help you to understand the phase one deeply. You can you can find me on Twitter or on the East 2 Discord server, there's a phase one channel to ask some phase one related questions and we can discuss there. Thank you for your listening.